hey, today I'd like to share with you the way for you to crush the white players who are playing the first move pawn to d4 against you. In this case, you may respond with pawn to d5. And after that, when they're trying to play the queen's gambit against you, you say, wait a minute, I'm not going to accept the gambit and become a defender or I don't want to defend, I want to counter gambit. And this move pawn to e5, known as the Albin counter gambit, leads to a sharp dynamic position. And I'm going to show you the really practical opening traps that you can use as black. And of course, if you're playing d4 as white, you've got to be aware of them as well. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov, and without further ado, let's go into the trap number one. Of course, the main move for white is to accept this gambit pawn, and after that, black pushes the pawn to d4, which is the whole essence of the black's plan. This pawn gives black some space advantage, preventing the white's knight from being developed to the natural development square. Also, in some variations, together with the bishop b4 check, this may help black start some sudden attack against the white's king. So these are just some basics. And finally, this pawn on e5 is a little bit weak as it's advanced too far away from the rest of the white's army, and therefore black may target this pawn as well. All right, anyway, white plays knight to f3, black goes knight to c6, the natural development moves, white plays knight to d2, also one of the main lines. Since the knight cannot go to c3 because of this d4 pawn, it's natural for white to develop the knight to d2. And here black played queen to e7 preparing to capture the pawn on e5. And white played another standard move, pawn to a3. We know that in the Albin counter gambit, quite frequently black uses this diagonal to attack white, and therefore white may wish to cover this potentially vulnerable square b4. And here black captured the pawn on e5, and white decided that it's just an exchange of central pawns, and they lightheartedly took the pawn on d4, but all of a sudden, here comes knight to d3 checkmate. Now let me also show you one killer line for white. If you're playing d4 as white and someone is trying to use the Albin counter gamut against you, here's what you may do. In this case, you go knight to f3, knight to c6, pawn to g3, which is probably the main line actually. In this variation, you can see that it's a little bit hard for white to play the natural move pawn to e3. We'll take a look at this move in a moment. And that is why it's natural for white to wish to develop their bishop in some other way by playing g3 and developing the bishop to g2. Black goes bishop g4, taking aim at this knight potentially, because if you can eliminate this knight after an exchange, then black may get back the pawn with knight takes e5, therefore bishop g4 makes perfect sense. White goes bishop g2, black goes queen to d7. So far we're going over the main line in this variation. And usually white castles king side, which leads to a sharp gain with opposite side castlings as black is gonna go queen side. And after that, it's a complicated game. But here is the trick. Instead of castling, you can play a subtle move pawn to h3. And all of a sudden, I've just uh, saw in a game database that this move totally confuses a lot of black players who are trying to play this line against you. Because now, what should black do? If they move their bishop backwards, well, it is doable, of course, but in this case, they're kind of losing this opportunity to eliminate the knight and grab the pawn. And therefore, black is a little bit... You know, reluctant to do that. So here's what they do. Instead, they decide, okay, I'm going to take it here and after that take the pawn on e5. But here's the problem. If they take the pawn right here immediately and after that it does not really take the pawn back as white can easily collect the pawn with on b zone. Bishop takes b zone. Therefore, black, let's take this move back. So black thinks, okay, let me just castle. I'm going to do this anyway which will also protect this pawn. And after that, I'll take an e5 comfortably with a really, really cool game. And if someone plays this move against you, which is, by, by the way, I've just checked the uh, lead chess database and queenside castling is the most popular move for black in this position, which is crazy. So if someone plays this against you, then first of all, of course, you're afraid to say this. <laughs> and after that, you go bishop g4 and black should resign here. The point is, because of the pin, you're just winning the black's queen. Notice that black can't block the diagonal by playing pawn to f5 because of this en passant capture, and the queen will be captured anyway, so that just wins the game. By the way, in this video, we're more of looking at the Albin counter gambit from the black side, but if you want to know more traps for white in the queen's gambit, then I've got another video about that called Top 5 Traps in the Queen's Gambit, which got over a million views already. So the traps there are really, really cool. And you may click the link um, in the description of the video, below the video, and check this out afterwards. And now let me show you another trap for black. 
in case white takes the pawn, pawn goes to d4. And here, once again, the whole point of the of this opening setup for black is that this pawn is kind of annoying. It does not let white to develop normally. The knight cannot go here. The pawn can go there to e3, but there are some problems with it. And therefore, white may wish to play pawn to e3 and just eliminate this annoying pawn. This is actually a mistake. And after that, you go bishop b4 check. Now white needs to cover the king. And after that, instead of trading the bishops, you take pawn takes e3. And here's the white's problem. They cannot recapture with the bishop anymore because the bishop is pinned. And this also leads to a really cool trap, I think known as the Lasker trap here, because in this case white thinks, okay, if I can't take the, the pawn, then why don't I take the bishop? That's even better. I just win whole piece. And here's the deal here. You don't want to trade the queens. Instead, you play another intermediate move. Pawn takes f2. By the way, this trap is really old. And yet it is insane if we're thinking about the amount of people who still fall into this trap on a regular basis. Just because the previous white's moves are really, really natural. Now, what's the problem? White can't capture the pawn because in this case, black will just happily grab the queen and the game is over. Therefore, here, this forces the white's king to go to e2 instead. And here there is one more intermediate move. Pawn takes g1. And here is a funny thing. You kind of change this king color of the white's knight, right? It was white, now it's black. And the point is, you are not just grabbing the knight, but you are also delivering a check. So you keep punching, you keep attacking. And after white recaptures the knight, you go bishop g4, check. And after that, you're finally winning the queen. So this is the Lasker trap, again, old, but still practical. A lot of players are still unaware, and this definitely gives you a winning position. By the way, just to mention this thing that sometimes people say, okay, if white here, if rook takes g1 is losing, why not to just move their king backwards? Well, in this case, you attack with the left hook, queen to h4 check, and after g3, for example, queen to e4, and you're still winning. In this case, you're winning the rook, and just the white's position is completely destroyed here. While the previous trap we analyzed is a little bit known by people, there is another one very similar, which is often overlooked. Here's the thing. What if white goes knight to f3 first, which is the main line, knight goes to c6, and in this case, white thinks, okay, but now I can finally go pawn to e3 and all that all those previous variations with the blacks pawn being promoted on g1 now is not an option for black and so it's crazy that a lot of players still think that playing e3 at this point is fine for black for white it's actually not the case because black may continue with a similar move bishop to b4 and this creates some problems for white again white has to cover the king and then you once again take the pawn on e3 with all the similar ideas you want to des destroy the white's pawns so that you can attack them later and white still cannot take the pawn because of the pin and if white takes the bishop on b4 in this case you still take the pawn on f2 again the lines are kind of similar white cannot take the pawn because they, the king has to protect the queen or else it will be captured so king to e2 is forced and in this case yes you cannot finish the game right away like black did in the previous example but nevertheless in this case you just take an easy approach you trade the queens and after that you take the bishop on b4 and even though black is not completely winning here but definitely you've got a winning position right now black is a pawn up and this pawn on f2 is also annoying in addition to that the white's king is weak the white's pawns here are weak as well, and black can easily finalize their development somehow, let's say bishop f5 and castle queenside or play rook to d8, and you can easily see how hard the white's position is. Therefore, with correct play, black should win this. I promise to show you how you can also refute the Albin counter gambit, because indeed if you're going into the main lines after knight to f3, it leads to a very complicated game and it is very easy for white to play an inaccurate move and to go down. Therefore, how should you react if someone is playing this against you? There is a hidden weapon here. It is the move pawn to a3 first. We know that this bishop b4 is one of the main threats of black and you take it away immediately. And after black goes knight to c6, you play pawn to e3. We know from the previous line that this pawn on d4 is annoying, and by playing pawn to e3, you want to neutralize it right away so that you never have to worry about this. After that, black will probably take, and then you can trade the queens here on d8. Black will take either with the knight or with the king if they wish to keep the opportunity of recapturing the knight on e5. 
Then you take here on e3, they take knight, takes e5. But after that, there are a couple of good moves here. Knight to f3 immediately is a good option. Or you may go knight to d2 if you don't want to. And after that, develop this knight to f3 so that the knight is supported by the other knight. And at this point, you may wonder, hey, Igor, you said that this is the refutation. But it certainly does not look like that is a refutation that white is winning. Well, of course. The position is just slightly better for white. But here's the deal. Players who play Albin Counter Gambit are usually sharp attacking players. They want to attack you, they're tactical, etc. And in this case, you drag them into an inferior endgame position where they have to defend. And they will absolutely hate this. I remember my conversation with one um, Grandmaster Malanyuk, who knew uh, Mikhail Tal, one of the world champions, and he said that we had a joke at the time that if you can drag Tal to an endgame, it's like you won a pawn. Because Tal was a great attacking player, but he was certainly not the best endgame player. And here it's kind of the same situation. So I guarantee that your opponents will suffer a lot here. And even more so, the, this position is not as easy for black as it looks, because they're having some problems with the king, right? And you're ready to castle queenside, which will also put some indirect pressure onto this king. So the black's problems are not yet solved. And let's take a look at one game where black played bishop to e6, white played knight of three. The knight will exchange, black played knight to h6. Of course, black could have developed the knight elsewhere, but it doesn't really change the situation drastically. White played bishop d3. I'm not exactly sure why didn't they castle, which was more natural. But anyway, bishop d3 is also a good development move. Black played knight f5, attacking the bishop. Bishop went away. Black played bishop d6, trying to neutralize the pressure. White traded and played pawn of c5 to kick this knight away. After it went back, white castled queenside. Now there is this opposition, so black removed the king to c8, and white goes knight to g5, attacking the bishop, potentially the pawn on h7. And as you can see, the black's position is still quite hard, and it's actually probably losing, because even though it is an endgame, but he's kind of playing without both rooks, and white is already attacking. Black played knight f6, white played rook e1 to increase the pressure to this bishop on e6, black played rook to e8, thinking that he's holding, but all of a sudden here comes knight takes f7. White found a way for a great tactical shot, kind of like you solve in, during tactical drills, but it's great that it was actually played in a real game. Here, if black captures it, which did not happen in the game, the white's idea is that after bishop f5, it forces in the main line this back rank checkmate. So pretty cool that white could deliver it even in an endgame. In the actual game, Black saw this this combination and he decided, okay, I just lost the pawn, it's not a big deal, let me go bishop d7 and maybe I can still hold a draw. But in this case, there is another super, super cool move, pawn to c6. White is pushing the same tactical motif, but with slightly different taste. In this case, White is threatening to capture this bishop with check, therefore Black has to do something about this bishop. And if they capture with a bishop, White delivers a similar checkmate bishop f5, followed by rook takes, and then another rook goes to d8. What a beautiful way for White to finish the game in an endgame. And here's a little quiz for you. It is Black to play. The game was played between two top grandmasters, Van Veli against Marzevich. And it was actually a blindfold game, and still Black found a winning shot here. If you can find it, write it down in the comments below. Let me also invite you to join my free masterclass, the best way to improve a chess instantly by clicking the link on the screen or down below in the description, where you can learn the proven system to advance your chess skills. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video and best of luck with your chess battles.